Yeah, my dear beloved children, hope you are in, okay? And our God is keeping you very well. Uh, this is our very own once in lesson number 18. You are welcome to our lesson number 18. In lesson number, uh, lesson number 17, we are looking at the ba Bunyoro Chitara Empire under the Bachwezi. We looked at the contributions of the Bachwezi and we said we grouped the contributions of the Bachwezi uh, in three social contributions, political contributions, and economic contributions. And we said the Bachwezi uh, remembered so, for so many things as I gave you the notes. Uh, they introduced iron smelting, back cloth making, long horned cattle. They introduced, they started salt mining in Lake Atue and many other things. They introduced the idea of building reed palaces, introduced the idea of building grass thatched houses, and very many others. We looked at the collapse of the Bachwez, and the main reason for the collapse of the Bachwez, we said, the coming of the Luo speakers, the coming of the Luo speakers led to the collapse of the Luo, of the Bachwezi. So the invasion of the Luo speakers and other factors. Yeah, so this beautiful day, I want to welcome you to our new lesson. Our new lesson. That's lesson number 18. Lesson number 18. And in this lesson, we are going to look at kingdoms in Uganda. Remember, our topic is the people of Uganda, the people of Uganda. Now, under the people of Uganda, we are still looking at kingdoms. And today, specifically, I want to look at Bunyoro Kingdom. Bunyoro Kingdom. Bunyoro Kingdom was the earliest kingdom to be founded in Uganda. The earliest kingdom to be founded in Uganda. Okay? Bunyoro Kingdom was the first kingdom to be established in Uganda. Therefore, it is the oldest kingdom. Okay? Are you getting me? Yes, I, I think we are together. So, the title of the king of Bunyoro is Omukama. I have told you previously, Omukama. So, the king in Bunyoro is always given a title as Omukama. The first Omukama of Bunyoro was Isingoma Rukidi Mpuga. Isingoma Rukidi Mpuga. Isingoma Rukidi Mpuga was the first king. Ask you, why is Isingoma Rukidi Mpuga remembered? in the history of Bunyoro Kingdom, who was the first Omukama. Mm -hmm. Let's move on. The current king of Bunyoro is called Solomon Gafabusa Iguru. Solomon Gafabusa Iguru is the current king, or the current Omukama of Bunyoro Kingdom. Solomon Gafabusa Iguru. Mm -hmm. Let's continue. Famous kings of Bunyoro Kingdom. Some of the kings that have ever ruled the Bunyoro kingdom, those early years, those early years, who are they? One who have Omukama Kamurasi. Omukama who? Kamurasi was also a strong king. He was the father of Omukama Kabalega, meaning after Kamurasi, there came Kabalega. Kabalega was the strongest Omukama in Bunyoro history. Hmm? Kabalega organized a strong army, strong warriors called Abarusura. Called what? Abarusura. Who were the Abarusuras? The Abarusuras were the strong, eh? strong army, strong warriors of Kabalega. These warriors used them to protect himself, to protect his kingdom against any attack. Any person who would come to attack him, he would send his strong army. Therefore, the Abarusura were the UPDF of Bunyoro kingdom by then. So Abarusura, we are the strong warriors of Omukama Kabalega. The Banyoro were both cattle keepers and cultivators, meaning they carried out mixed farming. They carried out mixed farming. Even up to now, they do mixed farming. Therefore, they are farmers. They are farmers. Which people? The Banyoro. Economic activities among the Banyoro. Activities done by the Banyoro. What are those activities? Number one, salt mining. They used to involve themselves in salt mining. Salt mining. Then another one was the iron smelting. I told you iron smelting is the act of making iron tools. Act of making iron tools or making tools out of iron. 
What are those tools? The spears, the pangas, the hoes, and many others. Iron smelting was one of the activities. Then farming. Which form of farming? Mixed farming. Those were some of the activities done by the Banyoro. Now, the Banyoro used to trade, to cut out butter trade with the Baganda. By that time, before the coming of the colonialists, before money was introduced, there was a trade called, a type of trade called butter trade, exchange of goods for goods. So they used to exchange goods with the Baganda. What were those trade items that the Banyoro would exchange with the Baganda? One of them was salt, potatoes. We had iron tools. What are those iron tools? The pangas, the hose, those ones, eh? spears, those are iron tools, bananas. Mm -hmm. What else? Back cloth. These were called trade items that were exchanged between the Banyoro and the Baganda. And that type of trade is called butter trade, the exchange of goods for goods. So they used to do trade with the Baganda. Let's continue. What are those factors that made Bunyoro Kingdom grow big and strong? Eh? Things that made Bunyoro Kingdom to grow big and very strong, very powerful. What are those factors? One of the factors that made Bunyoro Kingdom grow very strong eh, was able leadership. They had strong leaders, people like Omuka Makabalega. Strong leadership. When you have strong leaders, your kingdom will become strong. Your family will become strong. Your country will become strong. Able leadership. Another factor that made Bunyoro grow strong. Unit among the Banyoro. At first, these people were united, the Banyoro. They were very united. Unity. And they say united we stand, divided we fall. Therefore, those people are united. So they could fight any enemy together. Strong trained army. They had a strong army, which is called Abarusura. Strong warriors called the Abba Rusura. These warriors could attack any person who came to attack them. The warriors were trained by Kabalega, Omkama Kabalega. Then, at, at, and after some time, Bunyoro Kingdom declined. The kingdom, which was very strong, very powerful, feared by any person around, started becoming weak, weak. Weak. What made the kingdom, which was very strong, become very weak? What are those factors? Hmm? You know, you may become strong and you are feared by everybody, but at one time you will become weak. There are things that will make you very weak. So one of the factors that made, uh, one of the factors that made Bunyoro kingdom uh, to become weak, uh, we have... The kingdom was too large to be ruled by a king. I'm sorry I had some interruption. Someone was calling me. That's why I saw some interruption. The kingdom was too large to be ruled by one king. So we talk about the size. The size of the kingdom. It was too large to be ruled by a king. Then two, the rise of Uganda kingdom. The rise of Uganda kingdom. The rise of Uganda kingdom. When the Uganda Kingdom also emerged, it started fighting Bunyoro. So the rise of Uganda Kingdom weakened Bunyoro Kingdom, made Bunyoro weak. Another factor that made Uganda Kingdom to grow, uh, Bunyoro Kingdom to grow weak, is the coming of the colonialists. When the Bazungu, the whites came, they joined hand with the Uganda Kingdom, gave the Baganda guns gave the Baganda support. They went and attacked Bunyoro Kingdom. They went and attacked, and Bunyoro became weak. Remember, even Buganda Kingdom broke away from Bunyoro. It was part of Bunyoro, so it separated. Even Toro Kingdom separated from Bunyoro. Ankole Kingdom separated from Bunyoro. So those separations made the kingdom become weak. Internal and external conflicts, this unit among the people, the people started dividing themselves started dividing them souls. Remember I told you that when the Bachwes were in Bunyoro, they were chased away by the Luo speakers. By the Luo speakers. So why do we remember the Luo speakers in Bunyoro? Why are they remembered? These Luo are under the story of Jipil and Labong. 
when those were separated, some of the, of the group came to Bunyoro and chased out the Bachwezi. So why do we remember the Luo speakers in Bunyoro? One, they introduced petty names in Bunyoro, petty names such as Amoti, Akiki, Atenyi, Abochi, Arali, all those ones are Puli. Those are called petty names. In Bunyoro, you don't call someone by name. You call someone by petty name, Amoti, Akiki were introduced by the Luo speakers. They introduced clan leadership or clan, uh, clan ownership. It should be, they introduced land ownership. Land ownership by the clans. You will help me and correct that small mistake there. It should be, they introduced land ownership by the clans. Land to be owned by the clans. I will correct it in your notes. Eh? Another thing why the Luo speakers are remembered in Bunyoro, they introduced crops such as millet and Sogam. They also introduced. They also introduced burial sites for for clans, where to bury the clan members. Even today, people have places where they bury their family members. They always around the house, so it is a burial place, it's a burial site. Those were introduced by the Bachwezi, by, by by the Luo speakers. My dear boys and girls. Hope you are with me. I know you review the video, read through, listen, and then do an activity I've prepared for you somewhere in your notes, which I'll send to you. And now, coming next, what are we going to look at next? We are going to look at Toro Kingdom. Toro Kingdom. Shall look at Toro Kingdom. Toro Kingdom. Shall also look at Uganda Kingdom and also Ankole Kingdom. I want to wish you the best. May the Almighty God bless you for me.